Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris here. Uh, so today we're going to talk about fetching and merging. So last time we talked about how do we send changes we've made from our local to the remote and then do a pull request. And we haven't talked about how we actually collect that pull request in yet, but we'll go through that uh, in the next video. Today, we're going to talk about what happens if we make changes or someone makes changes to our remote and we want to pull those into our local. So very simple setup here. We have our, as always, we have on the uh, Chris-Alexiak GitHub account, I've set up a get good fetch easy mode repo, companion repo. That'll be in the link in the description. Uh, to be clear, this is like the, the best case scenario. Uh, as we go forward in the series, we're going to try tackling some less best case scenarios. Uh, they're, they're pretty, they can get pretty interesting is what I'm going to say. Uh, so, but for now, uh, I'm, I've gone ahead and I've made a fork of this on my C-S-Ale GitHub account. And uh, I've already gone ahead and made that, um, you know, made that uh, fork. And I'm also, I've already, as you can see, get status. You know, I've already gone ahead and cloned this repo, right? So we have, if we look at our git uh, remote dash V, we can see that this CSL get good fetch easy mode is in fact exactly this repo. So I've already set, set this up for us. Uh, we don't have to go see it every time. If you want, you can go back in the videos and you can you can check it out. But what we're going to do is a couple things. First things first, we're going to approach this as if this were like a semi-real um, situation. So what's happened is that I've got this awesome repository that I'm working on. Uh, and uh, I'm it's a fork from someone else's awesome repository. And they've pushed some dope changes. And I want those on my local. So first things first. You can see that this branch is one commit ahead and one commit behind Chris Alexiak main. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the sync fork button. I'm going to click the update branch button. Now, the reason I'm going to click the upgrade or update branch button instead of discard one commit button is I want to keep whatever changes I've made. So I'm going to click the update branch button. Uh, you can see that we successfully fetched and merged from upstream Chris Alexiak main. So that's great. You love to see that. Uh, and if we go ahead and we go to sync fork, we can see we are no longer behind, right? So when we refresh our, our, uh, our remote, we are no longer behind. We are up to date. We are happy. Everybody's happy, right? And that's awesome. However, if we look at the, let's just look at the commits, right? So if we look at the commits, we have this, uh, you know, added emoji to read me MD, and then this added in secondary instructions and merge branch Chris Alexiak main into main, right? So let's go to our terminal and check out the Git log and see that we have this added emoji to read me.md, but we're missing those two commits, right? So we'll press Q to exit this menu. And how do we, so how are we going to get those? I got to tell you. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to use the command git fetch and we're going to spec we're going to specify that we want origin. So we're going to git fetch origin. Basically, this is doing what it sounds like. We're fetching origin, right? We're we're going to our remote origin, which again, we'll just we'll just open that up. Um uh, get get remote dash v, right? We've got this origin remote and when we use the git fetch origin command we're just telling the git tool hey go to go to that remote and fetch anything that's new so we click that and we get some text right we have this uh unpacking objects we got some new stuff we have this main and origin main and now if you look at our git status you can see that our branch is behind origin main by two commits and can be fast forwarded Awesome. Now it says here to use git pull to update your local branch. We're going to do a slightly different method today. Um, and that's just to show you guys kind of like 
one of the tools we can use. Git pull is a command that we'll talk about at the end of today's video, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend a whole different video looking at kind of what that is. So let's go to our Git branch and let's use the dash r switch or flag, whatever you want to call it, um, to check out and see. Okay, so we've got our origin main, and we've got our origin head, and that's pointing at origin main. Okay, cool. So you can see here, like. We know we're behind and we can fast forward, but how do we actually get that done, right? Well, we can use the command git merge origin slash main. And what that's going to do is it's going to merge origin main into the branch that we're on. So one of the things that you might want to make sure is make sure that we're on the main branch by using git switch main. You can also use get status to see that in fact we were, or you can use get branch without the R flag because R is for remote, right? Uh, to see that we are in fact on branch main. So what we want to do now that we've confirmed we're on branch main, we've got those two commits and you might be say, well, can you check and see what commits we have just to verify? Why not, right? Let's do get log origin slash main and we can actually see those two extra commits, right? So that's added secondary instructions. Now this is from the base Chris Alexiak repo and we can tell that. And then we have this merge, which is what we did in our fork. And you can see that the remote is ahead of our, our, our main by those two commits. And that's exactly what Git's telling us. That's exactly what we expected. Now, if we just go to Git log, we're not gonna see that, right? Because the Git log is our local Git log. So we have to point it to that origin main remote so that we can see exactly what's going on in that remote. Now, we can use the command git merge origin main, just run that, and you can see we've got this fast forward, we've got these, the readme's been changed, 17, uh, you know, changes, many plus, three minus, uh, and, and yeah, that's really it. So if we, if we go to our git status now, we can see that we're up to date. If we check our git log, you can see that we're up to date, right? Where everything's up to date with origin main and local. And if we do our git log origin main again, you can see again, we're, we're all at parity. Everything's up to, up to the standards that we wanted. And that is very <laughs> simply what the git fetch command does, right? It fetches those remote changes, it doesn't apply them, right? It just fetches them. It just tells us what they are. And then we use the git merge command to merge the two different histories together. Now, lots can go wrong here. So I don't want you to think that it's always going to be, oh, you just get, get fetch, get merge, everything's fine. Definitely not. But in a lot of cases, that is going to be good enough, or you're going to be able to fast forward through those merges. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about what fast forward is in the, in a future video when we talk about git pull. But for now, we're just going to think of git fetch as like, hey, hey, remote, tell me what new stuff's happened, right? And then git merge is merging it into whatever branch we're on. That part there is key, right? We have to make sure we're on the branch we wish to merge those changes into. If we're not, then we're gonna merge them into whatever branch we happen to be on. There might be conflicts, it might not work, there might be unrelated histories. You really can't be sure. So you wanna make sure you're on whatever branch you're working on when you're pulling from that remote branch, right? And that is it, that really is it. So let's do one more round just because uh, this is not very, uh, you know, crazy. So. Let's say the project maintainer adds a new file. And they're going to add, of course, you could have seen it coming, coolfeature.py. Uh, and it just, you know, prints. This is, this is so cool. And that's it. That's all it does. Uh, added cool feature. Right? So the project maintainer did that, that's dope. And we're like, oh man, new cool feature. We need cool feature for our for our project as well. We, we can't be without cool feature. So we head to our fork, 
of the project repo. We sync it by using the update branch button. We, we see that we successfully fetched and merged from upstream uh, Chris Alexiak main. We see that we are now up to date. We've got this add cool feature commit in. We've got that merge. When we look at our code, we see cool feature right here. When we click on it, we see Prince. This is so cool. Ah, we had to have that feature. So cool. So now we go back to our terminal and right away, nothing, right? We can't see anything. And that's because we haven't talked to GitHub yet, right? We haven't talked to any of our remotes. So let's go ahead and do that by using the command git fetch. Now this time we're going to use a, a different flag, which is going to be called dash dash all. This is going to fetch from all of our remotes. Now, when you have a very small <laughs> set of remotes, like say for instance, you just have your origin, uh, this isn't going to mean a lot, but it is an awesome way to get all of the changes from all of your remotes. Uh, for right now, we're just going to see that it exists and then we're gonna go right back to origin. So we're gonna get fetch that origin. As you can see here, we got information. So let's check and see what it is with our get log origin main. Because remember, if we just get log, that's for our local, we have no idea about these changes yet, right? All we've told Git is, hey, go see what the remote's up to. Go get their changes, but don't apply them. Don't add them yet. So we can go to git log origin main, if I can type. And we can see here, added the cool feature, merge branch Chris Alexiak main. Okay, cool. So what happens if we wanted to look at those changes? Luckily for us, it's fairly straightforward. We can use the command git diff main and origin main. So what that's gonna do is using the git diff command, which again, we talked about diffs a little bit when we talked about PRs, but it's basically like the differences between things. Between main, the branch we're on, and origin main, our remote, if we run this, we can see, okay, so we have this, this diff, we have this index. I mean, a lot of this stuff doesn't super matter to us, but we have this plus 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 B, cool feature and we have this addition of this is so cool so this is the cool feature file so we don't have this file locally and we're getting that file and it contains these contents and it shows the plus means it's adding it right so very straightforward to follow we can press q to exit that screen now is it like the most beautiful thing to look at the diff no but you get used to it over time. Uh, and if you're using any of the UI tools, they display it beautifully. So don't have to worry about that. Now that we have the changes we want, we can check that we have them again by looking at our remotes Git history. We can go ahead and merge those changes into our main branch. Now we already know we're on our main branch. Again, we use git status, we're on branch main. If we use git branch, we can see we're on branch main. Uh, and if we try to get switch to main, we're already on main. So we, we're very sure we're on main. And we can go ahead now and get merge origin slash main. Remember, anytime you see that, uh, you know, name slash branch name, that's talking about a remote. And when we don't provide a, any additional arguments to get merge, it's just going to merge origin main into the branch we're on. We press enter and we see now we are no longer behind, right? We're on, we're up, we're totally up to date. And when we use our ls-l, we can see this cool feature. And if we open that cool feature, we can see print. This is so cool, right? We're just going to control X to exit or command X, depending on your operating system. And that's really it. That is how you fetch. And that is how you merge. In the simplest case, uh, again, it's not always going to be this easy. In fact, most of the time it won't be, but it's good to see how it's working, what it's doing the first time, and then, you know, we can expand from there. But for now, that's it for me. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about git pull, as well as what some of these words like fast forward mean, right? What does that mean? Uh, so we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a great day. Uh, and yes, uh, if you want, when you've completed watching the video, 
You can head to the companion repository, fork it, you know, play around, follow the instructions in there, have a good time. All right, peace out.